Welcome back to Latter Day Divers. I'm Will Perez. I was just so excited about some thoughts I'm having. I didn't want to lose them, so I'm filming off set. I wish I had drawn these, but my wife and I collect caricatures of uh, just our family whenever we get a chance. So today, as I've been thinking about the restoration of the gospel and preparing for general conference and studying the Joseph Smith history like we've been invited to do, I've just been re-blown away by some simple powerful truths that are exemplified by Joseph Smith's first vision experience. I know this has been said many times, maybe even by me on occasion, but Joseph's first vision experience is a perfect pattern for deep learning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because it's deep learning, and this is Latter-day Divers, we're going to talk about it. In this video, we'll go into one, how is Joseph Smith's experience a pattern for deep learning? And even more importantly, and an emphasis for me today is two, what do Joseph Smith and Russell M. Nelson have in common, and why is it amazing? Ready? Let's dive. So, two blasts of dive alarm, pass the word, dive, dive. Dive, dive. Now, the pattern or framework for deep learning in the gospel of Jesus Christ revolves around three main things. Knowing and understanding in our mind and in our heart, taking effective, righteous action, and becoming like our heavenly parents. Take my word on it for now, but I'm gonna include some great sources in the description below. Deep learning, know and understand, effective righteous action, become. Right off the bat, I'm sure you can think of some ways that Joseph Smith exemplifies this pattern, but here we've got a 13, 14 year old boy studying the scriptures, wrestling in search of something. He is torn by the tumult of opinions and war of words, and he needs answers. Through sincere study, he comes to know and understand the truth that God giveth wisdom to them that ask, as he reads in James 1.5. Never at any time, he says, has the Spirit brought this truth more powerfully into the heart of man. Deep learning, knowing and understanding is knowledge of the mind and of the heart as communicated by the Holy Ghost. So once Joseph comes to know and understand, we read in the Joseph Smith history, verse 13, he says, at length, I came to the conclusion that I must remain in darkness or ask. So he comes to this conclusion. He really comes to know and understand. After he concludes, he says, at length, I came to the determination to ask God. In accordance with my determination, I retired to the woods to make the attempt. So here's this young boy who comes to this conclusion in his mind and his heart, and then comes to this determination to take effective, righteous action, to know and understand is of little value if we don't act on it. This is step two in his pattern. And we know what happens next. He has this incredible experience with the father and the son who inform him and teach him and invite him to rise to the occasion. And they let him know that the current theologies of the day practice a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. In DNC 84, we read that in the ordinances of the priesthood, the power of godliness is manifest. My mission president always kind of drilled this into us, but he would say that the power of godliness is the power to become. So Joseph has this experience and the Lord says the power of godliness, the power to become is not on the earth right now, but I will reveal it to you. So Joseph ultimately unlocks this power of godliness, this priesthood authority, this power to become. He goes back home and he tells his mother, in his own words, as he leans upon the fireplace, I am well enough off, I have learned for myself. Joseph Smith, this young boy, came to know and understand. He came to act on his knowledge and understanding. And then he became, he received keys and power from heaven that ultimately transformed his life and the world. He had learned for himself. Now, what do Joseph Smith and President Russell M. Nelson have in common? For starters, they want us to experience the same thing. Joseph and President Nelson don't want us to rely on words and opinions, and we don't need to. We can go straight to the source. I love, love, love this quote by Joseph Fielding McConkie. Here's what he says. In regard to the first vision, the prophetic efforts of Joseph Smith did not center in sharing his spiritual experiences, but rather in the effort to qualify us to have our own spiritual experiences. The emphasis of his ministry was not on what he had seen, but on what we could see. Joseph invited us to check him by having our own sacred grove experience. The validity of an experience is if it can be repeated. A good seed not only bears good fruits, 
but it always bears the same fruits regardless of who plants it. The validity of an experience is if it can be repeated. Now here's President Nelson. How can we find answers to questions that perplex us? If Joseph Smith's transcendent experience in the sacred grove teaches us anything, it is that the heavens are open and that God speaks to his children. The prophet Joseph Smith set a pattern for us to follow in resolving our questions. In like manner, what will your seeking open for you? What wisdom do you lack? What do you feel an urgent need to know or understand? Follow the example of the prophet Joseph. Find a quiet place where you can regularly go. Humble yourself before God. Pour out your heart to your Heavenly Father. Turn to Him for answers and for comfort. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ about your concerns, your fears, your weaknesses. Yes, the very longings of your heart. And then listen. Write the thoughts that come to your mind. Record your feelings and follow through with actions that you are prompted to take. As you repeat this process day after day, month after month, year after year, you will grow into the principle of revelation. Does God really want to speak to you? Yes. That is the beauty of the restoration. You can know and you should know. God speaks to us. We have access to heaven and Joseph and President Nelson are encouraging us and inspiring us to tap into that power. As part of this process, Joseph brought forth the Book of Mormon. Terrell Givens in his article, The Book of Mormon and Dialogic Revelation says the following. The Book of Mormon hammers home the insistent message that revelation is the province of every man that may well be the Book of Mormon's most significant and revolutionary, as well as controversial, contribution to religious thinking. The particularity and specificity, the vividness, the concreteness, and the accessibility of revelatory experience. Those realities both underlie and overshadow the narrated history and doctrine that constitute the record. Think to our Come Follow Me study just in the first few months of this year. How many times do we see case study after case study of the Lord speaking to the mind and heart of earnest followers who are seeking to learn deeply? We've got Lehi, Sariah, Nephi, Jacob, Enos, and the pattern will continue, and it can continue with you and me. I'm so grateful for the restoration of the gospel. I'm so grateful for this pattern of revelation and deep learning that is taught to us by prophets and apostles of the Lord. I'm grateful that the heavens are open to you and to me and that Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father are not absentee landlords and they will speak to us. President Nelson believes in our ability to live and experience the restoration and he's inviting us to do it every single day. I invite you to think deeply and often about this key question, how do you hear him? I also invite you to take steps to hear him better and more often. Praise to the man, praise to President Nelson, but more importantly, praise to the father and son who communicate with any earnest seeker of truth who pays a price to know and understand, to take effective righteous action and to become as they are. I'm stoked for General Conference, and I'm excited for this unique experience, and I hope you are too. And I hope that we are ready to hear the word of the Lord as he speaks to our minds and to our hearts and through his servants on the earth today. The restoration is real. It's unfolding. Joseph saw what he said he saw, and the heavens are open. And I hope that you and I can experience that more fully this weekend as we increase our capacity to learn deeply the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope you have an amazing General Conference weekend. If you like this video, then actually like it. Share it, subscribe to the channel, and check it out. Thanks for being here. See you next time on Latter-day Divers.